Good morning guys and welcome back to another video. Today I decided I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful ring. And I was so surprised when I posted the picture to Facebook at how many people liked it and wanted to do it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I have to talk a minute about, um, I'm going to leave it off because the only reason I didn't want to teach this is because I custom fit it to myself. And also, you know how I measure and it is not conventional. It's very bizarre. So I was a little apprehensive, but then I said, you know what? I love this ring so much. I'm going to just go for it. So yesterday I did, I did a test version, excuse me, using another type of Ieco's, the glare when I was editing from these, I couldn't see anything, nothing. So unfortunately, I just, I had another ring, so that's good for me, but I have to show you on size 11s and 15s today because the Ieco beads that I do have are gold, silver, and then a, a few dark colors that absolutely will not show the direction in which we need to go down and then back up. So with that being said, I do have another little pretty ring that I can wear here. And I did the two-tone just to show you, but I ended up really, really loving this ring. It's really, really pretty on. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to leave the samples to the side because you're going to need a mandrel. And if you can see these little piles of 15s, I pre-counted them out so that way I wouldn't have to spend so much time counting them out. But you will need a mandrel, a dowel, or um, if you have the mandrel that already has the measurements on it, that works perfectly. Just something to use when we begin um making what I call little drizzles because this was inspired by a beautiful silver ring that I saw somewhere in, I don't know, Instagram, you know, when you scroll down and I said, that's stunning. I wonder if I can do that with seed beads. It looked almost like they drizzled um, silver back and forth, back and forth, like spaghetti almost. Really, really cool. All right, so I'm using um, 11s, two different colored 15s, so I can show you the thread path easily. And I already did a strip of even count peyote. I'm gonna make sure I don't lose any of my needles here. Here's my tail. All right, so here we go. And oh my goodness, please don't laugh at the way I measure. <laughs> It's the real deal and I'm not lying. When I sell my work and I have to do custom pieces, I will say use a ribbon or a piece of paper. And that's what I did here to get the measurement. So I just, whatever finger, if you want it here or here, I just cut a strip however long and I'm gonna really pull on that paper and use the rest of my fingers, that's why I'm wearing no rings on this hand today, to squish it squish it in there like that so that way when you do that decorative part that's what's going to show so that's how I got the measurement for this part which all I did was make a strip of even count peyote that length which for me was two inches and then you have to figure out, oh, where did that come from? You have to figure out how many 15s you'll need depending on your finger size. Now I made this for my middle finger. It's an eight and a half. I'm going to be using 15 size 15s across and it works perfectly. Oh no, I lost another one. I'm going to have to recount those. Um, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial, just a quick way that I start peyote. But if you're doing the ring for um, this size, I went through two and a half yards fire line. I use eight pound test and a size 13 beading needle when you're working with um, the Aikos because they're so small. All right, so here we go. You want to pick the width of the ring 
for this band in particular, I did 12, but for this one, I'm only gonna do eight because they're bigger. So I'm gonna pick up eight. 11s, just like this, and I'm gonna slide it down and leave a small tail, just, just about a three to four inch. And then I wrap it around my finger and turn my whole hand like this. So it's coming toward me, my working thread's tucked down in here, and the tail is over here. And I'm just gonna pick up one, 11, and I just messed up that whole pile. Skip one and go right into the next. But that way you have a refresher if you forget how to start um, the even count peyote, but it's one of my favorites. Pick up one more, skip one, go into the next. Pick up one more, skip one, and go into the next. Yeah, this one would be very, very hard to make and sell um, unless you had the perfect measurements for somebody. So I'm going to make just a, a whole bunch of them, just all different random sizes because I received so many compliments when I went out yesterday on um, that ring. It was incredible. Okay, so now I just pulled my fingers out, pulled really hard so it sits nice and straight, just like this. And now all we're going to do is run back down. I always flip my work because I like working from top to bottom. And we're just going to fill in these little gaps. So 111 into each of these spaces. And we'll do this all the way down. And you'll continue doing this until you have reached the desired length for the strip that you want for whatever finger you want to wear it on. Yeah, I was so upset. I mean, and the video was like 30 minutes long of a lot of silence because I had to keep counting to make sure I had 15. So I said, no, I've got to do it a different way. So I just flipped the work. I just completely flipped over. And now I'm going to go into each bead that is sticking out and use a very, very high tension. Yeah, but my friend used to laugh at me because I'd say, just use a ribbon. It's much easier and much more accurate for me to get a nice, perfect fit when I'm making a custom piece for somebody. So <laughs> that's truly how I measure. And flip and keep going. And that's it. So we're going back down now, right into each bead that's sticking out. And like I said, continue until you have, I had a two inch piece right there. Okay, and that's all you would do, keep going. And I'm gonna set that aside and move on to this one. Now here's the part where since we're not zippering this up, which I think is cool, we're just going to go ahead, attach a needle to the tail, and we're going to get rid of that now. So it's not in our way, and I have to pull down a lot harder there. I can feel movement. So with the Aiko's size 13 beading needle, I just went like this along the edge beads. So I'm coming out of this bead right here. I'm going to move over to this one. And I'm just going to go up and down using these edge beads because with those um, beads, it's incredibly tight. Very easy to crack a bead. So this was the way I buried the thread. And I'm going to pull a little bit harder and go up and down. And now I'm going to go from this bead right here, right back over to this one. And then right back up again, almost like I'm making an invisible square. I'm gonna do it over here. So I'm gonna go down, right back up this one, just locking that thread upon itself. Okay, and we're good. But I want to burn coming out of a bead here and I'll tell you why in a minute. So I'm gonna step out that bead, pull down, Press the work out because I don't want any buckles or 
thread showing. So yeah, um, I also burned through the work yesterday. It was just one of those days where I said, this is definitely not happening today. So if the thread's sticking out on top here, I'm not going to burn through and I can actually get really, really close if there's a piece of thread showing, which I thought there was, but we're good. Okay, so now it's time to put the work on the mandrel. I'm going to pull off zoom a little bit just so I have room to show you. Okay. And like I said, you can use your finger, but I tried and it was really hard. Or a mandrel. We're going to fold it over like this. And I'm going to keep it loose just to start, just to show you. So my thread is coming out of that bottom 11 right there. It's time to pick up 15. I'm going to start, I'll start with this bright color so you can really see this beautiful turquoise that I love I always have and we'll pick up our 15 and um, that's the thing somebody said oh is it just a bunch of loops and I said no it's not I did not want to make a bunch of loops here's here's what I did so I'm coming out of this bottom one now I'm gonna pick up this one right here but we're always gonna go in this direction, this way. All right, go very slow just so you don't get caught up. And what you want is a nice messy look. I'll pull it down a little more. And no straight lines, none of that. I wanted that messy look um, as best as I could. I tried to mimic it as best as I could. I really like the solid colors, but that's up to you. So here's my 15. I'm coming out of this one now, and I'm gonna go right over to this one. You can use your thread as a guide. See how it lines up right there? And remember to always go in this direction, up that way for this part. Okay, and it's getting wiggly, so I'm gonna pull it down a little more. So hard to hold on to, and it's loosening up, so if that happens, I'm gonna show you how to fix it, because that kept happening to me yesterday. See how that bead right there is coming loose? We're just gonna go and pull, sorry to cover it up on you, pull down really hard and it straightens it right out. Right now, everything is going to be loose. It is going to be a little fussy at first, but we'll get it. I can actually go down a little bit closer. Oops. Okay. Keep going with your 15 size 15s. It's one of those rings that are incredibly easy to make, incredibly hard to explain and show you though. I need more hands. <laughs> so here we go, I've got my 15 on. I know I'm gonna go right up through this one. Again, use your thread as that guide. It'll help you so much and just get them in there. and they're bouncing all over on me. This looks like a, a way more than 15. I'm gonna count this real quick. Let me see what we got. Four, five, eight, 10, 12. Wow. Okay, see how the thread's already showing you where you need to go? Right over to this one. And remember the direction, always that way for the moment. Now I'm gonna move it down because I wanna make sure, there we go. And you know, as you go along, just kind of fiddle with it so there's no thread showing. I told you I needed more hands for this one. But it was so much fun and just seeing how excited you guys got made me say, yes, I'm definitely gonna try to modify it so I can teach them. Um, in an easy way. Hopefully this is much easier than 
<sighs> what I went through yesterday with the glare and oh my goodness. And also, if you don't have those Delica beads, it looks just as beautiful with 11s. So, you don't need any other special beads. And also, you can go, so here I got my 15 on. I know I'm going to go right over to this bead. You can also add more layers if you want more, um, I'll call it fluff. If you want more fluff in there, more pizzazz. Excuse me for just a minute. I've got to take this bracelet off. It is very uncomfortable. Okay, now I have to count. All right, we're getting there. So now we're gonna go right over to this one. Okay. Keep going, we have just two more. And right up through here now, this very last one. This is actually really cool. Rather than just zippering a ring up, I I am obsessed with this. Okay, so last one. Let me get in here so I can see. Okay, and we're going to finish by going right through this one. This very last one right here. If I can get in there, I apologize. It's 6 a.m. because around here, people start making a lot of noise really early. So I have to get up really early and do my videos. That way there's no distractions, especially when um, it is a holiday weekend and it gets pretty noisy around here. All right, um, I'm kind of hoping that gray shows up. Um, I'm going to run with it. All right, so just keep going with your 15. Okay, so now we're coming out of that 11 in this direction. Now I have 15 on. Again, if I'm using the same color, which I'm going to do with this is just to show you. We're going to go down toward ourselves now. So we'll pick up that same bead right there, but we're going to come down in this direction now. And you'll see it's going to start to take its shape. I pre-counted for nothing because look at what happened. I made a huge mess. So I apologize if you're going to have to... <sighs> Watch me count, which isn't very fun, I know. Okay, so again, 15 on. We're coming out of this one. If you lose your way, just pull that thread over so we know we're going to go right down this one now toward ourselves. And just let it fall where it's going to fall. We can loosen that up like this. Fluff everything up. And then pull it back down and pull down. You want that messy look. There we go. Oof, I can ease up a little bit. Don't worry if the sides are buckling. We're going to fix all that after too. Because yes, the sides of the work look like they're buckling of the actual swatch. But we can fix that. All right, and then we'll go right back over. I'm even gonna use my thread for this one, so I know I'm gonna go down this one. I'm actually gonna try it with several more colors just to see, um, and a couple more layers just to see what it looks like. 
because I really did have a lot of fun with this one. All right, so now I'm gonna go over to this one, always down toward yourself. Okay. And keep kind of like moving things around just like that. Oh, my birds are here. They know I spoil them. <laughs> every morning and every evening. I can't help it. They're cute. And they're really funny. They're funny birds, those seagulls. You stomp around on the roof and they're just funny. All right. We're getting there, guys. I know this isn't the funnest thing to watch, so I'll speed it up as fast as I can. Okay, coming out of that one now. So I know I'm gonna go right over to this one, go down, pull. What a really fun ring, oh my goodness. So much fun. I have a million ideas running through my head. Even like adding three millimeter bicones in there would be gorgeous. Um, you know, just here and there. I think that would be really cool too. That's the thing about me is there's always something running around in my head. Always an idea. A four or five. And then um, I get up in the morning because sometimes in the middle of the night, I'll scribble an idea down and then I get up in the morning and I'm like, what does that even say? What are you even talking about? And then I figure it out. Oh, yes, I want to do this. All right, I'm gonna keep that right there like that. And here's my, yeah, we have two more. Ah, these little teeny 15s. Fourteen, fifteen, right down here. And yeah, yesterday I kept making ridiculous errors. I was changing the direction and going how I normally would zipper. So today it went much better. I just hope when I edit, everything is clear. Five, six. All right, last stitch. So we'll go right through that bottom one. And here's where we're gonna bury our thread. So I am going to just make sure, I'm gonna pull it down really tight. Everything looks good, wiggle that around. I'm gonna move it up just a little bit to mess it all up. All right, everything looks great on my end. I'm gonna pop it off the mandrel and actually put my finger right in here pull down. So see how this bead got distorted right here? We're going to fix that now. So we're just going to go to the one that's right next to it. Pull and then go right back down and pull. Pull really hard and that's going to fix that. And then again, we're going to use these edge beads just like this, up and down. This is what I did. I'm showing you the exact technique I did with this because burying thread in there is ridiculously hard. I usually go up into the work and make that square if you've watched my videos before, but wow, it wasn't happening yesterday even with a size 13. So I'm coming down this one now. I'm gonna go right back over to this one. And then right back down again, making that square. And then I'm gonna move over and do it again. With the 11s though, you can absolutely do this. Run up into the work. So I'll go away from that area. And then I'll do that same maneuver. So I'm coming out of this one. I'm gonna go to the one right next to it. And then right back up. And then down. Okay, 
And I'm going to just move over one bead and I'm going to burn right here. As close as I can get. Okay, great. Let's pop it on the mandrel and see how that looks. And that is absolutely beautiful. And press it out because you don't want to see any threads. So just press it out. But there you go. Let me go off of Zoom. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm going to try it on. Which finger? I forgot which finger I measured for. It's a little loose on this one. So it must be my middle finger. But that's the ring. I'm going to put them both on so you can see the difference. So 12 wide would be for this one. Same count though. 15 um, size 15s. This one I did with size 11s and eight wide, same amount of beads though, 15. And it is one of those that I put on and I, I just fiddle with because it's so much fun. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I really had fun making this and I hope I made it nice and easy for you to understand and you can make yourself something really beautiful today. So I all I hope you all have a wonderful Labor Day weekend and I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.